Well, here I am up in the mountains just shooting my bow. And I thought to myself, what better time would there be to shoot a video review of an all-purpose outdoorsman knife than in the middle of a snowstorm? Well, I guess you tell me. Hey guys, what's going on? This is another Outdoorsman One video. My name's Brandon. It's April 3rd and it's still snowing in Utah. Anyways, guys, today we're gonna be coming at you with a video review of this knife that was sent to me by Gunfighter Designs a couple months ago, and I've been using this thing hard to see what my opinions are on it. All right, guys, so I'm out here in the beautiful mountains of Utah where it is still snowing even though it is the middle of April. I just got back from a Mexican Riviera vacation for my birthday and I am sunburned and so the snow actually feels really awesome. But this knife that I've got here, this knife has accompanied me on a bow season and a rifle season. This thing is the POPS Mark II. This is an awesome blade, very cool looking, very comfortable to grab blade. Again, from Gunfighter Designs. Like I said, I've been holding on to it for probably about six months now. And I've put this thing through, through the ringer with the glass breaker on the back, with the whittling capacity, with the ability to choke up on it. We're gonna dive into some of the awesome features of the POPS Mark II. Okay, so for you knife nuts out there, let's talk about the actual blade and what it is. This is the POPS Mark II. That is the Professional Outdoorsman Precision Skinner. Okay, so this is your all-purpose outdoorsman blade, okay? If you need something that you can skin with, if you need something that's more of a defensive knife, if you need just your all-purpose outdoors knife, okay, that is either on your person, on your chest rig, on your shoulder straps, your backpack, you wear it as an inside the waistband, everyday carry knife. This is what this is purposed for. You know, if you're overseas and you're deployed, this might be a really good option for your, you know, more of a battle knife, your uh, combat knife that you're going to be able to carry on you, okay? This might be a really awesome option for you. So as you guys can see where I have my knife mounted, I love chest rigs. If you know anything about me, you'll know I've almost always got a chest rig on me. If I'm out in the mountains, I probably have this on me. It's a really awesome way. This is the Badlands one. It's a really awesome way to keep my range finder and my binos on me if I'm glassing. I'm sure I'm gonna get a bunch of messages about how I have this mounted, but I use this knife all the time. So having it hard mounted into one chest rig isn't really gonna work for me. Now, there would be better ways for me to mount this to this chest rig uh, more permanently, but this works for me and I've never had it come loose and I'm tugging on it pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna take it off. It's just got one clip on there. And get this guy out of the way, it's magneted on there. So I find this placement to be the best for me because it's mostly out of the way. It's not gonna grab onto anything, but I can grab it if I need it. Again, I'm not holding the bag at all, and this thing, this, uh, this sheath, this Kydex is not coming off, okay? Then I can pop it in there real quick. Now, if I am gonna run it on a belt or something like that, I found that this clip is awesome. For all you appendix carry nuts out there and inside the waistband guys, you're gonna be very familiar with this. It's just a UT clip. It's really awesome. You've got a really nicely made Kydex sheath there with this nice little, I've, I've called it kind of the tongue. So it's got a nice little ramp so you can get the, the knife back into the holster. It's got a really nice positive click once that gets in there and this guy is not coming out. Let me hold it from the very top so nobody thinks I'm, I'm pinching it. But this guy is not coming out, okay? Obviously, I've got my little wrist device on there, but uh, not coming out no matter how much you shake it. But you give it a little bit of pressure, and that thing comes right on out. Okay, so starting from the point, you've got a really fine down point so you can... Uh, be able to penetrate skin or, or whatever you need to if you're going to skin an animal or something like that with it. So you've got a really aggressive little point. It is not sharp on the back side right there. That's nice. So if you need to 
make a, a more specific incision onto something. And then you've got your two, I've been calling them chokes. So you've got your two chokes. This one is really good if you're trying to whittle something, like you're trying to make a fire stick or something like that. You can really get in there with this and, and have positive control because you're choked all the way up on it. So if you're trying to whittle something, that makes it a hundred times easier because you've got your thumb all the way at the front of the blade. Then you've got your other grip right here, which is gonna be really nice, obviously, for almost all situations where you're grabbing your knife. You've got your thumb right on the back of the tang there. Then you've got your little finger stop groove right there, really comfortable to rest your index finger, your trigger finger up against. So you've got your three titanium rivets that are holding the grips on there. Very aggressive looking, very aggressive grip. Uh, we'll talk about that more in a minute. On the inside, you've got your serial number lasered in there. On the back of the tang, you've got a ice breaker or a window breaker, glass breaker. Honestly, I've been using it as an icebreaker more this year than anything else because we've had so much snow and ice out here in Utah. Then you've got this nice skeletonized design on the back. This is a CNC hand finished blade, okay? It is made in the U.S., CNC'd in the U.S., 100% U.S. Gunfighter Designs, like I said previously, owned, owned and operated by former military guys, Marines at that, so you know they're building a good quality blade. Some of the most recognizable parts of this blade are gonna be the two thumb reliefs. I've been calling them the chokes, but you got dual thumb reliefs, so you can put your thumb on it right there and right there, depending on what kind of work you're doing. This is one tough little blade because this guy is made out of CPM V3 steel, some of the tougher steel that you're gonna make knives out of. I remember when the guy was trying to get me to work with him on this, he told me, after you're gone, this knife's still gonna be around for a little while. So this is gonna be a very high quality blade. This knife is built to last. I have banged this on metal. I have banged this on steel and aluminum. I have whittled with it. I have chopped logs with it. And this blade does not have a single nick to show for it. I have not sharpened it. I have not done anything with it. Awesome, awesome, awesome blade. Okay, so jumping into the size of it, the overall length of the thing is about eight inches. The blade is about three and a half inches, so you can kind of get a little bit of a determination on the size that fits your fancy there. So to accompany the dual thumb relief that we're, we've already talked about on it, you do have a functional glass breaker on the back. This glass breaker on the hilt here is not the sharpest thing in the world, which from my personal experience is good because if it's sharp, like on some of the asps for you military and law enforcement guys out there, I know they'll have that little ceramic piece on the back that is really sharp and I know people have reported that they've cut themselves or banged themselves up on it. It's really nice, it is kind of pointy and conical shaped, so it goes along with the design of the knife very well. Again, you can see some scratches on there from when I have on the grip from when I have used this as a glass breaker and it worked very functionally, but I have not cut myself on it or snagged my hand of any capacity on it. So that's really good. Let's talk about the grip. I've already talked about how this grip is so aggressive on this deal. I wasn't originally sold on it because it, it was almost too aggressive and, and I was, I was kind of worried about it. But then I realized why it is so aggressive. It's because you can use it with gloves, you can use it when it's wet, you can use it when you can't feel your hands, which I will get into in a minute on why that's important to me. But looking at it, I was like, man, that is a really, really aggressive grip on there. You know, as opposed to your normal pocket knife that's more of a flat design and it's just, you know, straight and kind of comfortable for you. This is a working knife. This is an outdoorsman blade. This is a knife that's designed to be used. What do you want in a knife that's designed to be used? You want that thing to stay in your hand and to stay where you want it. So 
That's why the thumb relief is so aggressive, and that's why the finger grooves on there, kind of like a Glock Gen 3, 4, that have those finger grooves in there, they're very pronounced, so you've got a good positive grip on it. And I've noticed that when you're working with this knife, it is extremely comfortable. It may not look like it, but when you're whittling on a fire log or you're whittling on some, something that you need to make sharp because you're trying to lash some wood together, this knife stays where you want it in your hand because of that. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the scar on the back of my hand. I had a foldy gloving on my hand, so I have very little feeling above this line on all four of my fingers over here. So what does that mean? That means having a knife that I can feel in my hand is very important when I'm trying to skin an animal, when I'm trying to whittle as aforementioned. This grip is phenomenal. I believe he calls it the G10 grip that he's got on there. It's really good material. They make it in a bunch of different colors and designs and Cerakotes and, and deals like that. So I just got this color because it's very, this is the gray, I believe. Uh, it's, it's very sleek, very elegant looking. No issues or complaints to be had with that. Again, I was worried about it up front. Not so much now. Anyways, guys, this is the POPS Mark II. If you guys are interested, check them out. I don't get anything from saying that. I just think it's a really, really awesome blade. Go check them out. Gunfighter Designs. Support U.S. companies. I think that is the most important these days. Awesome blade for all of you outdoorsmen out there. This has been another Outdoorsman 1 video. Remember, be good, be dangerous, be ready, and we'll see you on the trail. Aim small, miss small. Twenty yards.